modified nishida an innovative approach to tackle third nerve palsy the surgical correction of exotropia and vertical incompetence in oculomotor nerve palsy is a daunting challenge for a strabismologist it varies according to the extraocular muscles involved where if the limitation of adduction is past midline lateral rectus recession medial rectus resection are useful procedures whereas for adduction short of midline based on active force generation test for moderate force generation we have lr recession mr resection and for weak to no force generation based on sacadic velocity analysis transposition of lr to mr or globe fixation procedures can be done in less than 100 degree sacadic velocity and lr recession mr resection for more than 100 degree sacadic velocity for the correction of vertical incompetence based on the inferior rectus function an appropriate procedure can be chosen from recession resection of vertical recti advancement or weakening of superior oblique and full tendon supra or infra displacement of horizontal recti in our case an 8 year old child presenting with right eye squinting and severe ptosis since birth with left face turn and reduced vision in the right eye was evaluated to find a vision of 624 parts in right eye which improved to 612 after left eye patching and exotropia with hypotropia and severe ptosis in right eye as can be seen here and the rear segment of the right eye showed anisocoria and good pels phenomena and torsion was seen in right eye fundus examination and on squint examination a 15 degree exotropia with 5 degree hypotropia was seen in right eye on hirschberg a right eye exotropia with left over right vertical deviation was seen on cover test and since the eye was able to adduct to midline a prism reflection test was done which showed 25 prism diopters of exotropia with 12 prism diopters of left over right deviation the left eye findings were within normal limits thus the child was diagnosed with congenital third nerve palsy of the right eye on extraocular muscle evaluation right eye showed a minus 5 limitation of superior rectus minus 4 limitation of medial rectus and minus 3 limitation of inferior rectus plus 4 movement of superior oblique and lateral rectus was seen whereas left eye was within normal limits therefore the functioning muscles of the right eye were lateral rectus superior oblique and to some extent inferior rectus since the child did not have binocularity we chose to go with surgery and a decision to spare the inferior rectus was made as the muscle would be needed for reading the plan was to correct exotropia and hypotropia first in the right eye in the surgery the medial rectus was approached by a limbal conjunctival incision and plicated by 6 mm followed by approaching the lateral rectus by a limbal conjunctival incision and its recession by 9 mm thus the exotropia was corrected to correct the hypotropia 60 non absorbable sutures were passed 8 mm behind the insertions of medial rectus and lateral rectus muscles and sutured in superior nasal and superior temporal quadrant 10 to 12 mm from the limbus respectively thus a modified nishidas was performed which achieved adequate alignment of the two eyes in primary gaze and the patient was orthophoric for distance and near with maintenance of the binocularity during the one year follow up period to correct the severe ptosis a frontalis sling surgery was performed after 2 months of squint correction by the modified nishidas procedure thereby giving us good results and also the child had good stereopsis of up to 100 seconds of arc post operatively thus this single stage squint surgery to correct exotropia and hypotropia was found to be a simple and effective procedure with the added benefit of no ischemia of anterior segment also the literature search showed that this is the first time a congenital third nerve palsy was corrected with modified nishidas procedure thus In conclusion, modified Nishida's procedure is a simple and effective technique worth bearing in mind while tackling third nerve palsy. Thank you.